Hey Legionnaires and welcome back we're here on the field of NTW3 once again and we have another glorious NTW3 historical battle for you today and today we are back in Egypt as Britain has now arrived to get show its power in the Egyptian field and it is now facing off against the French invader they have come to support they're Ottoman allies, and yes, Abercrombie, Ralph Abercrombie, is leading the British armies here today, and he is preparing to take on, with his 12,000 British, preparing to take on a French army of over 16,000 men. The French army is fairly battle-hardened, having fought many Ottoman armies itself in this campaign so far, and it is ready and ready to go against the inexperienced British army, but... But they've also managed to encircle. And it is going to be a tough one for the French to crack, that is for sure. Uh, in this NTW3 battle, we do have four British armies pinned down in this small area here, getting shelled already by the batteries of the French. Those experienced artillerists already showing their worth in today's battle. As we have the, the redcoats here already setting up. They do look awesome. Actually, some pretty like unique sort of uniforms for like the period. I mean, you don't often see these sort of like style helmets or like shakos for the uh, for the British, more typically more like the, these guys here. But yes, this is a historical battle took place in 1801. Uh, so we are a few years after the like the Battle of the Pyramids and the more famous sort of French victories that had happened. Britain is now here to try and sort of, uh, bring order to the east and try and stop the French advance uh, towards India. So yes, I'm really looking forward to this one. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this one goes down. Historically, was a British victory. Um, Abercrombie uh, did in fact win this one, and it was one of his most famous victories. And he then goes on to die after this battle. Like he dies with his wounds that he uh, suffers at this battle. But the British do go on and win it. And then it kind of Abercrombie's death. Those kind of like he would have gone on to be one of like the leading British generals like of that period. But instead, obviously, it becomes Wellington. So really, because of this battle and his death, it gives Wellington a chance. Obviously, there's various other factors as well. But one of the factors of why Wellington then goes on to have such a stunning military career. But yes, the British do win this one. They actually lose about 243 troops um, killed, about a thousand, thousand two hundred wounded. To the French losing about four to five thousand troops in this one, so it's a pretty decisive victory for the British and sort of losses. Um, in this, in history, there wasn't really as much of a river in the way. There was more just a big ruin. There was ruins of um, I can't remember what the, uh, the the ruins were. I think of Nicopolis uh, nearby, um, a different Nicopolis to the one there in, like, in Greece, but uh, uh, Nicopolis here in Egypt. Uh, they had ruins there, and the British were uh, entrenched around those. Instead, we have uh, a little village on either side. I guess they could be our ruins and we do have a river running through. Um, but uh, the British are still surrounded a bit like they were in the actual battle. Okay, so we are back and yes, the replay did crash unfortunately, but we are back and we are ready to go again. We're basically back where we left off. The British are opening fire now onto some, uh, it looks like some auxiliaries that the French have brought here. Some, sort of, some meat shields we'll call them. Um, there are, well, 278 per unit. So, uh, these guys probably haven't got the greatest accuracy, the greatest reload, but my gosh, can they provide mass. And they also will, more importantly, protect the more important uh, actual French infantry units back here that need to come up. We've got slappers coming forward. And it looks like we do also have uh, some French infantry here as well. We've got Laguerre in their bright green uniforms. A uh, very excellent <laughs> uniform and camouflage to be wearing in the desert, I'm sure. So they're going to open fire, and they've got pretty good reloading and pretty good accuracy as they'll get a light infantry. There we go, getting off a pretty tasty volley there, that's for sure, more we'll get here. And we have some red coats as well, actually, on the French side, so these are again just some light infantry by the looks of it. Um, I think these are just, no, no, these are line infantry, these are the Royal uh, But yes, so that's just, you know, confuse the British a little bit, guys in pink. Guys in red, guys in green, probably some guys in blue. The French army in, e uh, in Egypt is a multicolored nation, it seems. Yes, you can see the mass from fort. The morale is starting to lower for them, but this is all part of the French plan. Shield the French troops uh, with this auxiliary mass to then allow the uh, like the French to get into bayonet range before they go in against the British. We've got a French cavalry unit here, a little guy, Cheval, actually managed to take out a 
But the British artillery piece, and I didn't normally catch that. A bit like the British didn't really catch that either. They managed to uh, get routed. And also, the guys managed to find a lot of British reserves right there as well um, in, their, in their charge forward. But here we go, the French artillery forward. We've got sappers coming forward first. So they're going forward another meat shield. Sappers are pretty good at melee, but they're a tiny little unit, and they're getting shot by both sides. Oh my gosh. Uh, it is brutal, but the sappers are Sapper here, getting like, gunned down by both sides. And in they go. And there you go, routed instantly. I think that's what you get for being shot by both friend and friend. But the French have now gone in with their Laguerre and Grenadiers, by the time you ask, because Grenadiers can fall. No, uh, no price for no saying what they're good at doing, those Grenadiers. Oh we actually routed a lot of the French early, but a few British units being here have been routed. And we've got a British unit looking the wrong way here. That needs to turn around and deal with uh, the oncoming French. The French are going to continue down the line now. This is that Grenadier unit. In both red coats. I mean, this is very confusing for both sides. No one knows who's who, probably, apart from shouting each other. And hearing and being able to smell the French, the French smell of frogs. It is their natural aroma. Yeah, the British having to retreat over here. And look at this, the French going down the line, routing British line after British line. This is really, really tough. The British need to retreat, they need to get back. More British reserves moving up, trying to plug the gap that is being formed here. But this Grenadier unit alone has done incredible work here. Routed at least three or four infantry units alone. That's done a very, very good job. Over on the other side here, you can see the French have also got into a bit of a line fight. They've not brought those. Jeez, there is a howitzer going off. That was pretty impressive. Um, but yeah, we have not got any sort of like mass, any sort of like cannon fodder on this side. It is just straight up line infantry, and we're going into a classic line fight, which is going to favour the uh, the British. The British have very good reloading still, very good accuracy, and showing in the body. Um, we already have the Legion of the Peace, which I presume is like Marines and Sailors. They've been, uh, they've been called in to come and help, and we have a cavalry charge going in here. The Goons coming forward here, and they have in fact been sent back. We've got some native infantry actually helping in this fight. Uh, this was actually a scenario that we did do on the channel in a in a live stream a little while ago, probably a couple of months ago now, and I felt like it was time that you guys might have seen the, the result, so we'd show it off. We have Grenadiers going in here, there's Barbaries. The Grenadiers are the Barbaries, maybe? I don't know. So they're going in, they are taking out those uh, British infantry there, and the nice little bayonet. So, again, same tactic working on, working on this side, annihilating the infantry in a good bayonet charge. A good charge here from the Dragoons, charging into the naked infantry. They cannot go in square. But yes, if you want to get involved in some of these sort of scenarios that take place on the channel in live streams and also in just like on the channel, uh, like in the server, feel free to join my Discord server. The link is down below in the description, along with also the link for NGW3 if you're a fan of the mod and still haven't got it. We've got more charges coming in here from uh, French line for troops. We're only targeting this native like Indian. These Indian troops here, these native Indians, uh, and they are being uh, forced back. The British lines also are starting to crumble in a few areas, though. Uh, it's, it's not just these, like the auxiliary troops of the British, though. There's, in fact, all the fled British troops also wavering. These guys are getting isolated out there. And this is not looking good for the British on this side either. We're going to have to see uh, a revival from the British somewhere. So otherwise, it's going to be a very quick and very different battle of Alexandria. You can see a lot of troops now retreating here uh, for the British, trying to give ground, trying to keep that gap between themselves and the French. We have the Dragoons coming in once again, trying to harass these uh, infantry units. And at this point, I send in the cold stream guard. They form square, I think, here. And I send in the cold streams. And I tell them, you must hold the line. We've got to send these dragoons and these Frenchies packing. And there's no one better to do the job than the cold stream guards themselves. There you go. Hold the line, guardsmen. Your king and country demands it. And there you can see they're holding the line for now. The French on this side have also pushed back the British. They have another line forming up here. Gun is set up. 
Um, I imagine they're going to try the same old tactic again. Send forward the uh, the cannon fodder, which is still pretty strong, pretty healthy. And then send in the grenadiers as a second wave. Um, have we got cannon fodder on this side? No, these are Legion Copet. I don't know what this unit is. If someone could tell me what they are, I would be interested to know. But uh, I've never seen them before. Legion Com Copet? I don't know how you say that word. You can see, see the limits of my French. Yeah, this is the uh, Coltrane Guard still in action here, taking on multiple French units. And, I mean, it says winning slightly, but morale would say otherwise. Those, uh, those Frenchies, the Coltrane, they're holding their ground. They don't mess around. They have to defend them up. These are some of the strongest and finest troops in all of Britain. The uh, British lines have reformed up. Uh, starting to unleash their volleys again, trying to chip away at those French units there. And there you go, one a French unit broken, one one breaks. That will affect the other units. You can see their combat losing slightly, and also uh, I imagine unhappy from losses and also exhausted. Costumes though also starting to suffer on the morale front. And of course you can see there, I don't know if you can see him, the officer fighting with his top hat on. The only way you can go into war in this period with a top hat on. You're both sophisticated and the gentrified. Gen gentrified? That's definitely not right. That's probably some weird fried gentry. Um, gentrified? That's what I meant to say. Um, but yes, you can see here, the French actually pulling back. They have maybe bitten off a bit more than they can chew on this side here. Not going to crumble as easily as this British flank compared to the other side, which did uh, take a lot of hits. And as you can see here, we've got a little sappy to come forward. A brave 11 men, they're going to rush this battery and try and get rid of the gun. If they can do that, it will allow the French to move up. And in go the sappies. And the British are actually going to send in the line of to try and counter charge. And this probably works in favor of the French anyway. This stops the British firing. The guns have been saved, but the gun crews will be isolated here. The carriages are running off into the desert. And in fact, we're seeing British troops countercharge? Is this maybe to stop the auxiliary units from being used? Perhaps. I don't know. It's a weird strategy. I'll give it that. It might work, though. The British sacrificing a weakened unit, I guess, to try and uh, deal with these cannon But these are, I think, Grenadiers, like a converged Grenadier unit, looking at their might attacks. Quite correct. That is uh, a good sign for a Grenadier unit in, these, in the British Army. We're going to have the Sappers come forward again for the gun crew, and it looks like the British are going to try and stop them once more. And yeah, the, the French move ever close to healthy units here. 184, the German unit. Jeez. Pretty tough. Uh, British have. Force back the French on this side. Looks like they're going to make a push of anything on this flank here. We've got a, a general over here. Royal Avignon. It is famous red coat, of course. You've know, got to mix it up. You've got to confuse the British. Fight alongside the well camouflaged uh, Laguerre troops here that we saw earlier. The Laguerre. Oh, Bolognese, I'm going to say that is. And we have the Sailor again. All just, you know, battling away trying to break through. We've got. I think Abercrombie's in one of these armies back here. Abercrombie's back here, depending on this flank he is. Uh, a lot of British troops are still off to this right flank here. Um, I was playing as this British army out here, and there's actually a lot of British troops, I'll let you guys know, still out here, um, not being used, including some British cavalry. But here we go, the French are coming in again. Uh, it looks like we're going to have a charge from British cavalry as well. Looks like a little light to do going forward, and they're going to try and clear out that cannon fodder. And they have done just that, but we have got French units forming square. I'm going to see a counter charge now from a Dragoon unit coming forward there. Uh, the Light Dragoons are going to retreat to Britain. Will the Dragoons follow? British units famous to cannon usually form square. It's one of the bonuses of playing with Britain. Most of your infantry can form square. If it speaks the King's tongue, it can form square. Square, which does mean that the French can move forward though. They can get their uh, columns a little bit closer because, well, I mean, not all those infantry are firing onto the French. Most of them are looking in other directions. But we are seeing a lot of infantry start to break it, including that cavalry, actually, as well. The uh, unit has been routed, probably with the help of the squares, but yeah, we'll take Grenadiers moving forward here. Let's converge Grenadiers. They're sending some of the attacking. The French here are taking some pretty heavy losses. 
So, same on this side, really. Looks like the uh, the British are going to be pushing forward a little bit here, actually. They're moving up troops. They're extending this line, trying to, uh, to, to try and take a fight to the French on the side. The French did take a pretty big uh, hit, but they still got some pretty nasty units available, including a huge uh, how is it like formation back here? How, how is this? Is this five? Oh my. They have been shelling this British position night and day. Brutal. Oh dear. Have the French found a crack in the British lines? They might have done just that. This unit is on red morale. French unit's not looking too great either. But uh, it does seem as though morale might be about to crack there for the British. And another charge coming in here by the French. And like I said earlier, the French have good morale staff. Better than the British by a long, long way. We have Benoit coming in here with his, with his battalion. He's going to try and help break these British. And you can see not one but two British units going. A third might fall into the British trying to get troops out of there. They are dropping light flies, these Brits, as they run for their lives. Get out of there, boys. Get these skirms, maybe just to slow down the enemy. Get these line infantry, very precious line infantry that the British have back. The British on this side here are starting to make a bit of an offensive. It's interesting to see. They're actually pushing quite a way out. They uh, are trying to deal with this cavalry, and they're almost at these guns. Those four pounders are point blank range. Uh, if only they can get a little bit closer. The gun crews are, yeah, within spitting distance of the British lines here. They could nearly get them. And these uh, units here could flank around, really, and try and push on the French, potentially. They just need to get, like, this infantry near the shield and square, and then get this one up to the charge into melee. And the cavalry should be uh, dealt with. Maybe move this one slightly forward a bit more if they need to, but they could get that up. It's maybe a bit bold. Oh, jeez, yeah, I think they're shelling. Yeah, they shelled the square. Poor guys. They just got folks down. I mean, they're so clumped up, you can't miss with a cannon. But yeah, it's a bit of a bold move, that is for sure, with uh, the British being pushed way back on this flank here. On this side here, though, the British holding, holding them well. Doing a good job, in fact. They're actually carving through French lines uh, cannons. You saw that this unit down the red morale. The guard road. I don't know, is that guard roads? Probably. I don't think they're an actual guardsman unit. They're just called guard roads. But yes, they're, uh, they're taking a lot of hits there from the artillery. And we have another charge here from uh, a cavalry unit. Green screen forward again. Again, targeting those Indian troops here. Bengal troops. And there go the howitzers once again, a glorious sight. We have got a British infantry in reserve ready to replace the uh, the routing uh, Bengal troops there. And I don't know, it might be enough actually. There you go, another Bengal unit broken. It might break a third one here. Those troops are causing all sorts of issues. Another charge there from the French trying to route these Bengal troops. They do so this time, another Dragoon comes forward. There's Sanatini. Oh, a charge right across the line of fire there of the British. Not a wise idea, but here come all of this French infantry now. The Grenadiers come in once again. They're getting really stuck into them. The British there instantly routing those. And this is the Le Royal Marines. The Royal Marines. And he couldn't work out that one. The British here though stuck in melee. They've not gone square, they are bundled with cavalry. And they've got to keep away. And there you go, they actually, by a miracle, look like they're going to rout the French cavalry. Oh, well, actually, no, they haven't. They haven't. I feel they had. They routed all the French infantry though, by a miracle. The cavalry still holds, and that is winning decisively, apparently. British morale over here. Looking a little dicey, but they are winning in some other areas. Mass routing for the French here. We're seeing a lot of British units have a successful melee fight here. I actually got told by someone in the battle, during the battle, to counter charge after I volleyed. To try and get a little bit of an extra advantage in the melee fights. And it was certainly helping. Look at those rounds. Like the French uh, right the, against the British left, gone. That is very, very costly there for the French. Again, the region comp routed. They have routed the, uh, the Bengal infantry. And the British lines are still being shelled by Howard. Grenadiers there. Angevines there. These the Angevines? That means like British, isn't it? Something like that. Lesbian Angevines. The Angevines. 
after a dynasty of the British enemy, that's for sure. They're having to retreat. There's not much French infantry actually left on this side here. The British have done a very, very good job. On the other side, though, the British are looking pretty dicey. Uh, the French are getting close to the, uh, the town here. The Battle of Alexandria is looking pretty dicey, that is for sure. The Invincible is charging in. Can the British win this battle? They, can they keep history right? I don't know if that's right. Keep history true, that's what I should say. There you go. It seems as though it is not going the way of the British on this flank. I mean, there's obviously hope. They've got to take both sides of this town, have the French. So taking one side is all well and good. They've got to take the other side as well. And that means crossing this straight. That is going to be painful for the French. Obviously, they suit melee. Um, charging across the melee against British guns here. As you can see, the British already setting up lines. They are preparing for the inevitable. Um, I did get the call from my British allies saying, it's not looking too good on our side, Pope. We're going to need you to start setting up a rear guard. So I send forward my fresh troops, the troops that have not seen action yet. And we are going to put them into uh, into the line there. We've got plenty of fresh... I have plenty of fresh infantry as well. I was, I was saying earlier, over here, hidden in this forest, there was plenty of fresh British infantry being kept in reserve. Um, not because I doubted my allies, I just thought, we're going to need them somewhere. There's no point letting them get shelled for nothing, so I kept them hidden. Got a general way over here, he's moving out. And the British, as you can see here, have very much well and truly pushed back the uh, pushed back the French. The French uh, are going to have to come on again if they want to have any chance of winning this. They're going to have to push up. They're going to have to try and um, retake this side of the town. They can't sit back. It looks like that's what they're going to do. Exactly that. They've got eight pounders here. They have got the artillery. Certainly more of it. We still have some artillery on our side as the Brits, but yeah, they have the howitzers, they have a lot of like four and eight pounders. Yeah, I mean, the howitzers are doing they're shelling, they're doing some morale damage, but they're not doing much more than that. And we do have the uh, the French storming this building here. The British are trying to pepper the French outside. And in the window, the French are storming. And it looks like, looking like the British are exiting from the other side of the building. So the French have, might have been successful in taking this building. The French go in one side, the British go out the other side. There is another British unit in there though, looking since there's like part of the unit st stood outside the building. That's always a sign. There's, there's still some Brits in there. Yeah, there is very much some intense fighting going on inside that building. Keep sending the boys in. Kill, kill every last one of those Frenchies. I don't know, that might be a British unit there that's just marched out, I'm not really sure. It looks like almost like Portuguese or Spanish from like the Peninsula campaign, but it's definitely not. Oh uh, yeah, it definitely was British because the French, you have allies capture building, that is the French uh, capturing this building here. So well done to the French, they've taken half of their objective and here comes a long line of British running out of the building. So yeah, the British have failed on this side to hold their side of the river to hold this side of the town. It is now going to be up to this side of the uh, British defence to try and hold their half of the town. And we will see whether they can do it. I am very excited to see whether they can do this. It's going to be tough for the French, that's for sure, but the British also have to deal with the two fronts. Like, the French on this side, still not dealt with. Still have some healthy units. 141-man unit there, and there's some pretty healthy ones still around. And the Grenadiers still alive, and artillery. It's going to be tough. We have got a British cavalry unit over here that is very much alive and well, looking for some targets. And our prime targets were in fact artillery and I had my eyes set on this howitzer. I don't think I'm going to get it. Here is infantry forming square around it, uh, basically making an impregnable target. In fact, the general. I'm pretty sure he just got shot up by his own uh, artillery. We have got a general here. He was charging towards me. Probably to bait me in. I don't think he was really going to charge. Probably bait me in towards his line infantry. Instead, going for this, uh, this 8-pounder here with my cavalry. 
And in goes the cavalry. I actually managed to get routed by uh, the squares there, but we did route one of the guns. A small victory, I guess. I dealt with this one. He's going to force the French lines back as the British pu push forward here. I mean, the line fight is what I would uh, prefer in this battle over here against the French. Though it seems like they're winning slightly in some of these fights. Oh, uh, there's Baron. Doing okay, apparently. And the house is still shelling the building. And here we go. Oh, no. So, yeah, I uh, made a foolish mistake. We kind of missed it. Um, I was actually putting my artillery up here. And I pulled back with my infantry a little too early. And it's allowed the French actually get a ca uh, cavalry and a uh, an infantry charge across. And you can see they are coming across in column here. But we are not done yet. The Black Watch is coming forward. The Highlanders have been mobilized. So the Scots' finest have been sent in. And they're now going to have to deal with a good old melee fight. And if there's anyone that can take on the French in melee, it is the Scots. Once Britain's nemesis, now ally. An old ally of the French, funny enough as well. We have got line infantry set up here. They need to keep firing. They just need to keep hepping away. I was trying to be as careful as possible not to hit the Highlanders. I really did not want to hit these guys. Morale's already not looking great for them either. That's from, I think, from uh, artillery fire and maybe friendly fire as well. That's what I was saying. I was desperately trying to hit these guys. It's hard though, because we've got to fire in to try and support them. But we are also probably hurting their morale. Could this be a costly mistake by me? Pulling the, uh, pulling back my infantry, sending the guns up. I really wanted to get the guns up to fu uh, fire canister down this, down this road and just like just annihilate units. I mean, like artillery with infantry support, it would have been over, over for this, uh, this side here. Who knows? Who knows? Islanders are holding on for now, but like I said, I'm firing to the backs and it's probably not helping. And here I get rear charged as well by the Bengal infantry. This is not also what I did not ask for. I was like, no, don't charge me. I'm already on a, or in a very, very fine tooth. And you can see my men are fatigued. Well, not my men, actually. It's the French men. But there you go. The Highlanders break. And the floodgates might open here. There's native infantry. They're going to be needed, but not in melee, I don't think. The cavalry is still alive. And that is one of the big problems. Uh, we are firing good volley there from the... Native infantry that might help if you get a good chain route off, and that you can see a lot of units on the red morale for the French, which could cause a chain route here. Um, we got a lot of generals nearby. We're just going to keep rallying the British troops here, keep them in the fight. There you go. Look at that French cavalry routed, infantry routed. That's actually a lot of infantry there that's routed for the French. And there you go. Look at that a big, big route. We need to reform up quickly. Get back into the line. The French coming forward again. I need to get this infantry unit here into uh, formation. Force the French back. Uh, you can see on this side the British also are retreating. I'm not really happy with how it's going on this flank. Also quite concerned about this flank here. And I'm like, get, just get back. We need to just defend the town now. Uh, and hope that we can defend there. Some British troops are rallying. Not the right ones. I need the Highlanders back. Artillery still going off. Causing all sorts of morale issues for both French and foes. There you go, more French routing again will cause morale issues for the French. It, this game is on a knife edge at this point. Either side can win. Britain still had some healthy units like this over here. So like, to just like really, really inflict some damage on the French. But the French are starting to pick up the odd British unit as well. Morale not looking great here. This unit has been left to slow down the French. And we have uh, the rest of the British infantry units trying to get back to the town. Looks like we're going to see the Grenadiers here, the Les Angevines. They are going to get into melee. I don't know if they're going to win this fight, though. They did get a volley off to the British. I don't know, maybe they'll be okay. The general's nearby, though, trying to rally. And here we go. This is not looking good now. The French are only up against one British unit, and they're in melee. There's no sort of infantry support now to sort of fire onto the side. We've got some. 
with some of the cannon fodder in it. You do have some of the cannon fodder in it. And a long, long line of French troops there. And the funnily outlet. enough, the British actually managed to sneak a unit back inside and take their side of the uh, town back again. So the British do actually, in fact, hold this, uh, this building again. So the French have got to come back over this side of the river and try and retake it now. Um, they're sending in units, uh, but they're getting routed as quickly as they can get in there. Uh, the British are now sending up more infantry, trying to route units here. This unit here could get routed to send the sixth line infantry, sending in the converged gun it is. Now it's uh, going off again, and the French have quickly retaken this side of the river, so that was short-lived. Was that a bit of hope? The British still trying to force some havoc. But they converge grenadiers and here these guys have already proven their worth in melee against the French. And they've got to just slow down the Iran's here. We have enemy general dead. I think that is the uh, maybe British general that just dashed into that building there at the end. It's not looking great. A general there is routing getting shot. It's not a lot of room left for the, for the British now. As you can see they're getting stormed and hit from every side as the French get closer and closer get into melee I bet around the town the things are allowing the French to um, to get into melee you can't really form a, a good fire but there's not much else we can do the perimeter is broken and it's going to be a French victory by the looks of it as there is just merely one unit left inside the, uh, inside the building here I think there's another grenade unit another converted one there we got uh, the guard the guard really trying to storm the building no one more appropriate to storm it I don't think they're going to take it though I'm not winning slightly, but morale would say otherwise. But it does seem as though the Battle of Alexandria, a famous British victory in Egypt, is going to be a French victory here today. I, honestly, I think a big costly mistake was... Um, well, I think it was two for the... Uh, three for the British, actually. Two of which were probably my fault. Um, my guns over here trying to set them up. I should have just had three infantry units here and firing and just let the French come at me and see... If they could have broken through, I would have been better off there. I think also the British extend way too far out here. The British extend way too far out, allowing the French to uh, close in. They should have maybe tightened up a little bit more around the village. Um, and also, I think, pushing out on this side for the British. We should have just let the uh, the French come again. Instead of chase, chasing after them out into the desert, we should have just stayed by our objective and just uh, let the French come back. And it would have meant that we could have sent more reserves over this way potentially but there you go the french have taken this other building so they now hold both sides of the crossing and also re in reality both uh, ruins i mean this village would be really a ruin with all the howitzer shots going off but yeah that is that is the battle really i think the british have what have they got one infantry unit here they're actually managing to route this uh, this gun we'll just fast forward they're actually going to get this gun after all of that i still didn't get the howitzer I was so annoyed. I was like, that house has been my bane. You can see it's still trying to destroy me. I'd take out another gun, but I think I'm going to get routed here by uh, the infantry as I march towards them. Except my fate. I'm not here to try and turn this around. There's no way. I could get a general, though, here. If the general just keeps running forward. Go on, Manu. Get yourself shot. But, uh, yes, it does seem as though the... Uh, the British are going to lose this one here, unfortunately. The boys in red are doomed to lose here, unfortunately. As sad as a Brit myself to see this happen. But there you go. There is a victory for the French. So, hopefully I put up the uh, end result for you. But yeah, this was sent in by Johnny the Buffoon from his perspective. But I was taking part on it. So hopefully you'll be able to see my results, but not my infantry, like my unit uh, results, unfortunately. I did do pretty well, though. I got some pretty good kills. My cold streams guard, I think, were my best. Are getting a lot of kills in melee and the black watch i think were fairly high up on that list as well but we got unit stats for johnny's uh, he did pretty well as well on his side he was facing the other like the british that collapsed first on that side i was not facing him until the very end um, as you can see here some of his infantry the Leds invincible proving their name getting 258 kills they did very very well the grenadiers here the gascons getting 185 invincibles again getting 157 140 with some of these Laguerre. Um, and then we got some pretty good kills. His, uh, his cuirassier is definitely not them. The uh, Dragoons getting 105 kills. And uh, there are the rest of the kills if you want to have a look at those. But yeah, well done to everyone that took part in this uh, scenario. Thank you for all for joining as well and making it happen. 
I can never thank you guys enough for all the support uh, in these battles. It really, really does help out massively with the channel. And thank you if you got this far in the video as well for watching all this way. Again, also helps your likes, your subscribes, your comments. Everything really helps the channel grow. And I'll see you guys in the next NTW3 battle, which I'm sure will be a belter. Until then, bye for now.